Yeah, congratulations on the film. It's absolutely spectacular. Thank you. Um, and I think it's fair to say that everyone wants to be a bit of Lady Bird. She's kind of the anti-heroine of the film. And why do you think that is? Why do you think everyone just falls in love with her? Because uh, I think she's... She doesn't seem to really have any shame in who she is. Like, she's... Even if she hasn't quite figured out exactly who she wants to be or what she wants to say in the future or even really what she wants to do, um, she's not afraid of just going for it and figuring it out along the way. And I think the the sort of the gumption that it takes and the bravery it takes to just go, right, I'm just going to go for it is is kind of brilliant. And I think... Most people wish that they could be a bit more like that. To, if, to just see something and go, I'm going to pursue that or I'm going to go for it, you know? Mm. I hate California. I want to go to the East Coast. I want to go where culture is, like How New in the York. World did I race such or at least snow. Connecticut or New Hampshire, no, where I writers live in the get woods. get into those schools anyway. Mom! You should just go to City College. You know, with your work ethic, just go to City College and then to jail and then back to City College and then maybe you'd learn to pull yourself up and not expect everybody to do everything. <laughs> Lady Bird, is that your given name? Yeah. Why is it in quotes? I gave it to myself. It's given to me by me. It was really refreshing because you went um, makeup free for quite a lot of the film, and I know that you and Greta kind of decided that you weren't going to make worse than makeup and cover up, you know, the acne that every single woman has or yeah. every single guy has. And I was just wondering what it was like to embrace that freedom in film that sometimes it is covered up and why it's mm. important, you think, for audiences to see that realness? It's just important because that's what happens to people's skin, especially when they're teenagers and they're really stressed out and their hormones are bouncing off the walls. And, you know, I, I think there's so many, there have been like portrayals of teenagers in the past where they've got perfect skin and maybe like one spot for the zit scene or whatever and um I had never had bad skin um and because I was I had been working a lot and wearing a lot of makeup for press and I was doing a play and things like that so my skin just got really bad and actually I think it happens to a lot of girls in their early 20s as well and um and it just seemed like it would have been a missed opportunity if we didn't use this as a way to make her as authentic and sort of relatable as possible. You yeah, know? definitely. Yeah. Lady Bird always says that she lives on the wrong side of the tracks, but I always thought that that was like a metaphor. But there are actual train tracks. What she did was very baller, it was very anarchist. Put the magazine back! <laughs> she has a big heart, your mom. She's warm, but she's also kind of scary. You can't be scary and warm. I think you can, your mom is. So, you're not interested in any Catholic colleges? No way. I want schools like Yale, but not Yale because I probably couldn't get in. <laughs> you definitely couldn't get in. You've recently said that working with Greta has helped you kind of realize the, some of the inequalities that women face. And I was just wondering how it kind of made you reflect on the only, you know, your own experiences of inequality or how you're treated in the industry. Yeah, I mean, I, I think working with Greta, actually, it didn't make me necessarily think about the inequalities in the industry, but it made me, um, it made me sort of strive for more when it came to what I wanted to do um, within this world. And I suppose then by asking that question of myself, like, what, what do I believe I could do? Or do I think I could make my own stuff? Then I was faced with that question of like, I suppose a woman's perception of um, success and how we handle authority and how others deal with our authority and I think it's just something that's um, unbalanced and it's a little bit war it's quite warped um, and yeah and so more than anything it's just sort of been making me see um, women I suppose and how we are in the workplace in a different light you know see mm -hmm. it more clearly and sort of what needs to change and what I can do to, to make a change, which is really just to make the films that I want to make and continue doing that. Does mom hate me? If you're tired, we can sit down. I'm not tired. You were dragging your feet. You are so infuriated. Will you stop yelling? I'm not yelling. Oh, oh it's God. perfect. Do you love it? You both have such strong personalities. When is a normal time? You have sex. You're having sex? I'm ready. Just wanted it to be special. Why? You're gonna have 
so much on special sex in your life. As the kind of an agent of change now and following the Me Too and Time's Up initiative, how do you view the film industry and the females in your industry now? Has it empowered you to kind of make that difference and to kind of forge the path for, for more? Yeah, I mean, I think that's what it has made us all aware of is that it is our responsibility now more than ever to pave the way for the younger people that are on the way up, guys and girls, you know, because it's, I, I think young people in particular can be very easily taken advantage of. Um, and I have seen that, not even necessarily in, in a sexual way or anything like that, but I think with this sort of environment, it, it can be very easy for young people to be easily led astray and, and things like that. And it's really important that we're protected and, and that we just, you know, like any good community should, that we support one another and look after one another and speak to one another. And um, yeah, and, and so it's great that that's finally happening. Mm. But I also do believe that the film community is a, is a great community and um, there's a lot of great work that's been made through the film industry, yeah. so. And you start with Timothy Chalamet in the film, who's also in a coming of age story in Call Me By Your Name. Yeah. And on the subject of responsibility, did you feel a, a crazy amount of responsibility in having to bring everybody's teenage years to life and with your character? Because I know a lot of people came out thinking, oh, that's just like yeah. what sixth form was like. Was it quite, I don't know, was it quite a heavy load for you to take on? I wasn't even necessarily thinking about everyone in the world that was gonna see this. Um, because she's such an unusual girl to me, I kind of thought, it it does, it, I mean, it makes sense now, but I didn't necessarily think, after reading her on the page, oh, everyone will get her, you know? Um, but I did feel a responsibility to Greta because she wrote it and was directing it. And, and also, there are similarities between Lady Bird's world and her own when she was that age. So I wanted to, to sort of honor that, you know. I want you to be the very best version of yourself that you can be. What if this is the best version? What I'd really like is to be on Math Olympiad. But math isn't something you're terribly strong in. That we know of yet. Mm -hmm.